Good day, friends. Never before in recorded history has a people been so aware of the uncertainty of our world, the fragility of human life. Think about it. We are aware of natural disasters throughout Africa, Asia, and all around the world. We are aware of diseases rampaging nations, bringing people to their knees. We are aware of global economic depression. We are aware of political instability across the globe. We are aware of terrors, of wars, of terrors abroad and terrors in our backyard. We are aware of kidnappings in the instance that it actually happens globally. We are aware of people being kidnapped in the moments of drug lords rampaging teenagers. We are so bombarded by information. This leads us to a pandemic uh, of panic. We are anxious. We are uncertain. And we are angry at the loss of peace in our hearts, in our homes, in our community. But I must say, it is more the illusion of peace than it actually is peace. This is the way it's always been. This is how life has always been, but now we're suddenly aware of it. We're panicking, we're afraid, and we're looking to Jesus and saying, Lord, are you aware of this? Why aren't you doing something? If you're the king, why aren't you doing something? Why are your people also suffering? And that is exactly the questions that John was praying about on the island of Patmos. This apostle imprisoned 1992 after Christ on the island of Patmos um, by Emperor Domitian, the tyrant, the egomaniac, the man who thought himself to be God. He uh, banished Christians, killed them, but banished uh, the Apostle John to the island of Patmos because of his great powerful witness, the last of the apostles that saw Jesus alive. And John was praying and crying and saying, Lord, don't you care? God, can you save us? Are you in control? Where are you, Lord? How long must we still wait? What are you doing about this, Jesus? I thought that you're coming back to establish your kingdom. Those were his prayers. And all of a sudden, this man on the island of Patmos was in the spirit. And the Lord appeared to him. And he first answered the question by just demonstrating to him that I, yes, I can save you. Listen to what he says. John greets um, the church with his vision of the triune God, blessing them. He says, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And the seven spirits set before his throne. He first introduces the Father and then the Spirit and then Jesus. The Father he introduces with the words that God revealed himself to, to Moses. He's saying that I am the great I am the ever-living, ever-present God. And by doing that, immediately he assures the church that God has in the past revealed himself to a man called Moses, a messenger of God who delivered his people from the most powerful tyrannic empire that existed 2,000 years before Christ, 3,000 years before Christ, the Egyptian empire. And the Lord delivered his people from slavery. He can do it again. Then he introduces the Spirit and saying, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And immediately he alludes back to Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, where the Lord says that there will be a Christ anointed by the sevenfold Spirit of God, the Spirit of wisdom and might, understanding and power of God. And then he unpacks the sevenfold Spirit of God, which he later quotes again in this book. And he's saying, see, this Messiah will destroy the nations that oppress you and he will bring a peace so that the lamb and the lion lie next to each other, that the kids may play with the adders, a world where there is no death nor fear of death. And what he's saying is saying that God had delivered his people from the past and Christ will come to once and for all rid the world of evil, sin, death and fear. He is going to do it. And then he introduces Jesus as the faithful witness, the firstborn over all creation. I'm not going to read this whole section now because every one of these phrases are, are, are quoted again in the next two chapters. He reveals him as the faithful witness who through his preaching and his life demonstrated, proclaimed the kingdom of God and ushered it in through his death 
And we know that the kingdom of God is near because Christ has risen from the grave and is present. And that's where we're coming to now. John chapter 1 verse 9. I just want to, to read this. He's saying, I, John, your brother and companion in the tribulation and the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God. He's saying, because I was teaching and preaching the word of God to the church and to the communities, what the kingdom of God is like, and for the testimony of Jesus Christ, that my life is a witness that I have seen Jesus and that he is alive. And because of that, I was banished to the island of Patmos. And then he says, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day on Patmos. And I just want us to pause there for a second. John was going through terrifying panic and fear, anxiety, concern and cares for the church, but also for his own life. He was banished onto this island to die there. He was sent away to die. And he was afraid. He was imprisoned. But John did not sit in self-pity. John took his fears to God and he says, I was found by the Lord in the spirit. And all of a sudden, this island became a meeting place of God. And he's saying, I prayed. I was waiting on God in this terrifying moment, worshiping on the Lord's day as I would on every other Sunday together with my church. And all of a sudden, Jesus appeared to me and transformed my prison into his sanctuary, my banishment into my meeting place with the sweet Lord. And all of a sudden, a window opened for me and I could see into the throne room of God and I could see the events that would lead to Christ's fulfillment of his promise of bringing eternal peace again back to earth, of marrying heaven and earth. And this is his saying, and I saw Jesus as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending of the power of God, the first and the last, he who lives eternally. He says, I saw Jesus and I'm asking him, saying, Lord, do you care? Lord, are you aware? And I see Jesus here. Yeah. And Jesus says, yes, I am powerful enough to deliver you and I'm living eternally. God says, future and kingdoms are in my hand. And then he says, what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches. And he names these seven churches. And John hears Jesus speaking into him, voice of a trumpet, the first and the last, the almighty one. And as he turns around, all of a sudden, he sees something which he does not expect. He sees one like the Son of Man. He's quoting from Daniel chapter 7 and Daniel chapter, chapter 10. The image of the Almighty that is given all dominion and power to this one who is like the Son of God. One like the Son of God, like the Son of Man. And he sees the same vision, exactly the same vision as Daniel saw in Daniel chapter 7 and chapter 10. And he sees him. But he sees him walking among the lampstands. And in, later in the chapter, we see that the lampstands are clearly the seven churches of God. These seven congregations that he's writing to. And John's question, Lord, are you in control? Do you care? Where are you? Have you forgotten us? All of a sudden, he sees that the Lord has not forgotten. Where is God in a crisis? Christ is where he always is. He's found among his church. He's walking around the church. He's walking among them. And he's showing then in chapter 2 and 3 and the chapters coming after that, you will see that, that he's acutely aware of every congregation, of every situation, of every trouble that they're facing, of every temptation that they're facing. He's showing that in times of uncertainty, Christ is where he always is. He's among his people. And he's not abandoned them or forgotten them. He's not seeing them from a distance. But he's a God who is always Emmanuel, Christ with us. He shows them. But listen to how he sees him. He sees him as this triumphant holy God, one in the midst of the seven lampstands, clothed in a garment down to his feet, speaking of dignity, braided with a golden sash around his, around his waist. And he sees his hair is white with wisdom and his eyes are like fire, penetrating, seeing everything, missing nothing of the intentions of the heart and nothing is hidden from his sight. He sees his feet is strong and secure to carry like fine brass, powerful and strong. His reign is strong and is refined in his finest of fire. His voice 
is undeniable and cannot be ignored, like the sound of many roaring waters. In his right hand, he says, he holds the seven key stars of God. And I just want us to pause there. Where is Christ during a crisis? And he's saying, I am holding my church. Christ says, I'm among my church, but I'm also steering my church. I want to speak to people that are cynical about the church. I want to say Jesus is holding his church in his hand. And we'll see later that these seven stars represent the seven angels, the seven leaders of these congregations, real congregations that he's writing to. And he's saying that my church is in my hand. I have not abandoned my church. I'm aware of what my church is going through, but I've not abandoned them. I am steering them. I'm moving them. I'm directing them to be faithful witnesses of me, to usher in my kingdom through the prayers of the church and through what's happening in the world. He's saying, I've not forgotten my church. I'm steering and directing the events of this world. I'm the ruler of the kings of kings and of the spiritual world. Chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. But I'm also holding my church in my hand. People, we see Jesus is with his church. But then I'd like us to see what Jesus says to the church. And this is very important. The first thing that he says is, do not be afraid. Do not give into panic. Do not let terror control your life. Because he says, I am the first and the last. I am the Almighty One, one who lives and who died, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. He's saying, Church, I showed myself as the Alpha and the Omega, as the ruler over the kings of this world, over the spirits of this world. I, the Almighty One, the Glorious One, the One whose kingdom is secure and powerful, I am the One who is with you. And he's then giving them peace, saying that even in death, you are secure in my hand. Even in death, you are secure in my hand. I have the keys of Hades and of death in my hand. He's saying, do not be afraid. I'm with you. I want to speak to us as a church today, as believers, that are so aware of the terrors by day and night. We're so aware of the natural disasters. We're so aware of the disease and the killing that it does all around the world. We're so aware of terrors in wars far away and wars in our backyard. We're so aware of economic depression that impacts us. We're so aware of everything that we're facing and the anxiety is knocking on our door terror is trying to grab hold of our hearts and jesus is saying to you and to me today do not be afraid i the ruler of all things am steering all of these things and we'll see in the chapters coming steering all these things to roll out my kingdom see i am with you do not be afraid, even if the worst comes to you. Your life is secure in my hand. You are secure in my kingdom. Do not be afraid. I just want to take us back to verse 9 and 10. What do we do during this time of uncertainty and times like this that will still happen again, that happens all the time? We do what John does. If you find yourself panicking, pray your fears in tears. To God. Pray your fears and tears to God. Be found in the Spirit and allow the Lord to reveal Himself as mighty to you. I'm looking forward to the rest of this book. I'm wondering, what are you facing now? What are the fears in your heart? I'm inviting you to, like John, bring it to Christ, bring it to Him in prayer, and allow Jesus, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the one who has His church in His hand, to bring peace into your heart as He reveals Himself to you. God bless. See you tomorrow.